turn this on uh, the flash mode and I'm not gonna aim it at traffic, but I wanna see if this strobe is gonna keep people in the right side of the lane. Walking by my, uh, I was filling up and walking by my uh, trailer and I heard a hissing and there's a screw right here in my tire. The funny thing is I usually try to pick these screws up so they don't get people's tire and ironically I got my own. It's a good thing I heard about it and I don't, heard it I mean because I don't have my tire pressure monitor hooked up to my trailer yet just to the RV. So I gotta deal with that, but good thing it didn't go down all the way on me. I hope this stuff is good. We'll find out. about half of this bottle to do a trailer tire. Generally speaking, this type of product works good um, if it's a quality product. I've used this kind of stuff before. I think it's in my tractor. But yeah, this stuff will seal up stuff and it just stays liquid in there. So it's proactive. How ironic, I pick up so many of these so they don't get in tires and I get one. Tire pressure monitor is telling me that my trailer's low. Thank goodness I have an extra one for that. But now I gotta figure out why the ceiling ain't working and then uh, put some more air in it with my compressor. Maybe I need to put the rest of that uh, ceiling in there because I think that nail was kind of on the side. Not the side, true side side, but kind of not really on the flat part, so to speak. Uh, and uh, fill it back up. It's still leaking. Let's see if I hear it hissing. Thank goodness I found somewhere to pull over. I know it's pitch black, but I'm off the highway, so I'm not right next to the traffic. Hallelujah for that. Part of the adventure. There's always something going on when it comes to RV travel. But this tire right here needs a little help. Probably don't need to tell you guys what these uh, bottles are here next to this uh, pull off on the highway, but I guarantee you that ain't Gatorade Zero. Oh, people are such pigs, man. Well, 
this is my third uh, stop here trying to fix this thing. Tire pressure monitors indicating it's still losing pressure. So I'm back out here trying to keep this tire afloat so it doesn't blow out on me. I might have to stop and just plug it, get one of those plugs. I don't think I have one, but I could double check to uh, seal this up because this ceiling's not seeming to take hold here like it should. By the way, I am uh, right outside of Mesquite, Nevada. And that that stuff looks like it might start to hold. I kind of found where the hole was, where the screw came out. And it looks kind of gummy. I think it's so difficult because it's sort of on the side of the tire. If it was right in the middle, it'd probably be a little easier. But since it's on the side, I think that stuff's having a harder time kind of reaching it, if that makes sense. But it wasn't that long of a screw as you guys saw, so it can only get so high up on the side. But Hopefully I'm gonna fill it all the way up to 65 and hopefully that uh, works this time. If it keeps going down, I'm gonna to have to just stop somewhere and get the right kind of patch. If you ever got, if you ever use these type of uh, systems where you have a little air compressor like that, always let it cool down after a couple of minutes of use because they will burn up. And the other thing is, if you if you do put the ceiling in there, um, make sure that, if possible, you have the ceiling at the bottom, of, have the hole at the bottom of the tire, so when the ceiling is in there, the, the air pressure wants to push the ceiling out. So you don't just waste time trying to fill up a tire that's leaking as you're actively filling it. So if you can put, pinpoint the hole, rotate your tire to where the hole's facing downward. This is not working. Oh, it continues. So I got the patch kit from uh, Walmart. And thank goodness this uh, trailer has this escape hatch door. I'm able to get to the tire on the inside without taking it off and uh, patch it properly. So that's what I'm gonna do. Soapy water will show you where the leak is. As you can see, and we're gonna rasp it out, put a plug in, and then hopefully that'll work because this tire ceiling isn't working. That's 17 bucks wasted. Take a lighter, just get stuff like this if it's kind of cold like it is. Rubber and adhesives and stuff work best when they're warm. So just warm this up a little bit and we're gonna jam it right in there. And just heat it up just a hair. You don't have to like catch it on fire or nothing crazy, but just make it a little warm like this. It'll work more effectively. All right, out comes the hole. And then goes the, the piece in here. See that? Push it down, leave some of it out. Don't take it all out. I mean, don't push it all in. And then you got to kind of, well, I got it in. I just put it on one end more, not in the middle. Normally in the middle, it works for me. I'm going to cut a little bit of this off. I don't need to cut it all the way flush because it'll wear. But um, yeah, see how it wasn't right on the tread. It's kind of like just a tap it off to the side. They, that might've been why that ceiling didn't work as good. Still think it should have worked as much as I put in there. But nevertheless, Hopefully this will seal it and we can get on down the road. But like I said, you don't want to cut it all the way down. Leave a little bit on there, you know? Leave it nice and chunky. So maybe that's sealing to work one day and another a puncture at some point. I don't know. But it is a Sabbath. I want to be done with this so we can keep going. Shalom. It's got to look like a concession trailer from across the highway. Also guys, thanks for watching. Um, this video is about to be over, this episode. But please like this video, share it with others. It really helps me out. And make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Uh, I go through a lot of effort to make these videos to show you guys what it's like out here in my adventures and our travels and everything like that. I appreciate the love. And um, if you don't mind, do those things. 
Guys, take care. I really thought I was done, but the plug popped out because of the the liquid stuff. I guess that's kind of lubricating it. And I think I put the plug in wrong. You're supposed to put it in halfway. Like, I mean, put it in the middle, stick it in in the middle, push it all the way in or pretty two thirds of the way in and then pull it out really quick. So ignore anything else I said. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to that, but that's how you're supposed to do it and then you're supposed to cut off the excess flush. However, I'm gonna do a little experiment. I got my little light here. Although I got my hazards on, you'd be amazed how many semis come right next to me. So I'm gonna turn this on uh, the flash mode and I'm not gonna aim it at traffic, but I wanna see if this strobe is gonna keep people in the right side of the lane instead of being next to me. Let's find out. So I wonder if that looks enough like an officer you know, even though it's not red and blue, I wonder if that would be enough to keep people from driving into my, you know, like not not getting over when they could easily get over and give me space like they should. I wonder if that, that effect would be enough. Let's find out. Let's see how many semis get all the way over once they see this flashing light. It sure makes me feel safer. Okay guys, here comes the semi. Now, I don't know if this guy would have got over on his own or not, but probably at least one out of five were not getting over, if not two out of four. So, he's definitely over. And I would venture to say some of these people have slowed down a little bit, at least in that first group. But let's wait and see the next group. I'm going to pause it. And then when they get closer, I'll start recording. I don't know if you guys can see, but people are slowing down and they're way back there. You can see them getting over into the, the uh, far lane. So definitely if you break down, get a light. Obviously don't aim it at any traffic directly because this thing is ridiculously bright. It's like, it used to be the brightest flashlight in the world. Now they've made one brighter. But as you can see, it is really like getting people to slow down and they're getting over. So I feel safer with that. And I recommend it to you guys to use if you break down, especially out here in these silly highways. Hope, hope that helps. I'm telling you, there's a clear difference. People have slowed down and even this truck right here is getting over. You can see him. Shalom, shalom guys. Boy, that's effective, man. Not one person has been right next to me. Not one. That just looks like it gets attention, man. It works. Normally on the Sabbath, we like to post up somewhere. We enjoy our service. We jump around, we praise, we worship. We do not drive, but this is an exception due to the news that there may be a lockdown, we are going to head more east to at least Colorado and then um, wait, you know, visit there a couple days and probably just get on back home to home base. So um, we are out here in Utah, the be, uh, beginning of, not really the beginning of Utah, but basically we're in Western Utah. to head off. We spent the night here on the side of the road. We're about to head off from here uh, to Colorado. So this is a different type of uh, Shabbat for us, but you know, sometimes you got to do this, this type of thing depending on what's going on in the world. So the GPS put me in this little weird area, but this gentleman came by to help get me out. He, uh, he's let me uh, turn all the way around. Yes, sir, I got you. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. Because the GPS tried to get me to go through this little square concrete hole and I couldn't get through it, so. Thank goodness he let me in his ranch to drive around the circle. Try not to get stuck. 
stuck. Ah, my truck is sliding. He wants to get stuck in this mud. No, I'm sliding right now, guys. Ah, I keep moving. Trying to turn around here. Where are the GPS was trying to get me to drive through with this truck? No way, guys. Ugh, let's get out of here. Oh, what a pain in the butt this is really becoming. Thank goodness for my tire pressure monitor. But the plug comes out of this tire. And uh, because of that stuff I put in, so... I want to just try to put some slime in here and put some more of that in here. Hopefully it works. I don't know. But this is definitely a nightmare. Oh yeah, essentially there was a big chunk of that rubber pushed out here. So that rubber plug is pushing its way out with the help of the lubrication of the flat, fix a flat stuff. Oh, what a... What a weird situation. The idea is I'm gonna spray it with alcohol and try to get it like dry and real clean, then put in the plug. Then hopefully the next time it gets exposed to that tire sealant, it'll be firmly seated, if you will. Time will tell. It's a little colder up here. You can see the snow. But yeah, we're in the middle of Utah, or actually in the beginning of Utah. Probably the first quarter away through Utah heading towards Colorado. I decided not to put more slime in there. I'm just gonna leave it like it is. I put the plug in, cleaned it out good. Hopefully cleaning out the uh, hole with alcohol uh, will, will help the plug kind of seat in there better. So I'm gonna give that a shot, see what happens. But um, yeah, just filling back up the air right now and uh, hopefully we'll be back on the road. We'll try straight slime. Let's see how that works. Yeah. basically just blasted all around there. It might have worked if I didn't rasp out the hole trying to fill in the, uh, put in the plug. So now I'm gonna try to add some uh, trim adhesive in here along with the new plug and see if that works. So yeah, now we're pulled over. If this doesn't work, I might have to just find a tire shop or something. So it's the uh, alcohol treatment again. Then we're gonna put some, uh, enhance it with some of this super weather strip easy, uh, gasket and adhesive. Let's see if that ought to be like the eighth time. But damn it, me and his tire are gonna fight it out. You can hear the hiss again. <laughs> going down tire tenth time now it's personal me and this tire are having a fight we're gonna have it out i'm gonna try to like maybe try heating this up with glue and see if that gets it so hot and sticky that it won't come out but yep yep we're still fighting further along in utah 
still trying, still leaking. You can see the air coming out right here. I put two plugs in it this time because uh, one plug didn't. Look, it's still leaking. Even with two plugs. That's crazy. All right. Those are my last plugs with me. I cooked it with some uh, 3M weather strip stuff. And uh, that's it on the plug. So I'm only going to go up to 50 pounds of pressure. I want to leave that plug out a little bit. Maybe that'll help it. I don't know. We're just trying stuff. If it don't work, then depending on where I'm at, I might have to just call AAA and uh, get a get them to come take it and get it uh, replaced or fixed or whatever. I got a scooter I could put it on if I had to and pull it, carry it, but. You know, I think we'll be fine. The folks over there are walking their dog and enjoying the, the nature out here. So, it's pretty out here in Utah. But, uh, yeah. See what happens. It's part of the game. I don't count this as a loss. I'm at Big O Tire here and it's somewhere in the middle of Utah because, dang it, the tire is still going to get fixed due to my work, so I'm still gonna win it. Ah. So, uh, yeah. Time to quit monkeying around, man. Just get it done right. These guys are gonna hook it all up. Big old tire out in uh, somewhere Utah. <laughs> oh, geez. Big O, this is Rob from Big O Tire. You hooked me up. We're back rolling again. Onward and upward. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? So I just checked the retorque those after a while. Yeah. I should have asked you first. Sorry about doing that. I'm doing a vlog on YouTube. And so I'm recording my adventures across the country and all the crap I get involved with. So. But anyway, thanks a lot. they film Looney Tunes at the Roadrunner stuff. Nice. I'll have my wife come look at it a little bit later. Is this all handmade stuff? 